Dear Crystal Lovers, Welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is AM and I'm the founder of AVUV. So today we're at the plant house and this is where we spend a lot of our time off. Technically this is my parents' house and we call it the plant house because we get to borrow it once in a while and what we found last year was that we found gardening very therapeutic for our entire family. So we built a garden here and this year we're just gonna continue doing that because we enjoyed it so much. So now we re renamed it the plant house instead. We do a lot of like nature stuff around here. So for example, yesterday my son and I, we went out to the garden and we planted um, potatoes, beets, mint, dill and something else I can't remember and we have a lot of seedlings that are going out tomorrow and we're planting carrots today so um, yeah we have a lot of gardening going on here and we really really enjoy it all of us and it's so great to be able to teach a four-year-old city kid uh, about nature in this way so we really appreciate it and we feel very privileged to be able to do this with him. And another thing that we do here is that we go a lot out into nature. So we go foraging in the woods, for example, and this right now it's wild garlic season. And then we go foraging for um, nettles, for bread and for uh, fertilizer for the garden. And in the autumn, we go foraging for wild berries. So it's a really like space where we do a lot of nature related kind of stuff. Another thing that we do here too, is that we do quite a lot of art projects when we're here and mostly like the, the ones on a bigger scale. So if I'm doing pot a pottery project or big artworks or stuff like that, I tend to do it here because it's just more practical than doing it in Copenhagen, right? Um, so that's kind of the activities we have here. But what I want to show you today is actually how we decorated with crystals here in the plant house. Because we did it a little bit differently than, we, than what I showed you that we did in Copenhagen. And the reason for that is because we have different activities that we do here. So we want to amplify another type of energy here, right? So the video today is actually mostly about um, decorating with crystals. And I'm not a decorator or interior designer or anything like that. But I want to make a point about decorating with crystals. Um, because I don't quite enjoy when crystals are just scattered around randomly. And I kind of see that a lot going on. So what I like to do is make it more intentional in the space. And that way you get to enjoy the beauty much more of the crystals and you get to like see them more maybe like sculptures or art pieces. And at the same time, they infuse your space with a lot of crystal energy. So today I'm showing you how uh, I decorated here in the plant house with crystals. And this space is a little bit more mature because it's my parents house than our apartment in Copenhagen. But it is a very typical Danish type of house uh, and Scandinavian interior design. Um, so I wanted to show how to incorporate crystals into this type of interior design. Here in, I'm just going to take you through, I'm not going to take you through the whole house, I'm just going to show you the what we have going here in the living room and in the kitchen and in the bathroom. So first off, like the, the reason why I wanted to do this video is mainly because I want to show you how you can incorporate crystals into your decor. Uh, to make this really effortless connection between your spiritual intentions and what you physically do and, and kind of build this bridge. Uh, 
And I love for crystals to be aesthetically pleasing. Um, I don't enjoy crystals that are just floating kind of around and scattered around in our home. I think it should be intentional and something that you actually enjoy both energetically and visually. So I have a few different ways of doing that that I'm going to show you today. Um, the first one that I have here is this beautiful calcite slash argonite and it's just so beautiful and very raw, very unpolished and uncut. Um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And I love that it's not super cleaned up, that it's just very raw. Um, and I know that's not all people's taste in crystals, but what I love about this type of crystal is definitely the wildness and the the naturalness and ruggedness there is to it. And also I think there's like an, a sort of untamed creativity that I definitely really want to connect with when I'm here at the plant house. So this is a really beautiful piece and I know the guy who found it and I mean it's just a special piece for me personally. Uh, and that's again that's kind of what you want to go for when you go for crystals, right? So what I did in terms of decorating with it is just, you know, pairing it up with some other stuff. What we have going here in the plant house is, of course, a very Scandinavian type of interior design with a lot of pale colors and um, we have a lot of plants and wood materials and natural materials. Um, and you don't want your crystals to clash with that. You actually want to incorporate it into whatever interior design style that you're having, right? Um, because you want to enjoy it, you want to make it effortless and beautiful and aesthetically pleasing so that you want to hold on to it for a long time and actually want to notice it and recognize it. So another thing that we have here is that, and this is another tip, like if you put your crystals in a bowl, they, it just makes them look so much more intentional than if they were just randomly placed on a, a table or a shelf or something like that. So you want to be quite intentional about these, uh, these objects. So you want to display them as if they were an art piece, for example. What I did was that I took these three pieces of diopside, and this is a gorgeous, gorgeous crystal. I don't know if you can see it, but it's so beautiful, and it's actually Andreas's uh, crystals, these ones. And I mean, a type of crystal like this one, it goes very, very well with a space like this one, where we have a lot of greenery and a lot of plants, right? So it just, it plays off and it looks very natural and effortless. And with this, these types of crystals, I mean, obviously they just, I mean, green crystals generally, I would say, fit very well into the Scandinavian type of uh, interior design and the Scandinavian aesthetic because we have so much greenery in our houses and um, it just plays off really well with that. So definitely don't overlook green crystals. The whole thing about crystals and decorating is that I believe that you should be actually be able to see what you have here. I like a lot of empty space around my crystals so that um, my eye naturally falls upon them. So that's definitely something that I want to recommend in terms of decorating with crystals. And you want to go for the raw pieces too most of the time unless you find a really good piece of cut and polished crystals and I have one to show you later because obviously I love the raw crystals but once in a while I actually managed to find a tumbled or cut and polished piece of crystal that I actually enjoy. But most of the time it's, it's the raw pieces like this one and they're just so much more interesting, so much more beautiful than the cut and polished. 
And actually in the kitchen, we did kind of the same thing. We put mountain quartz cluster together with uh, a Himalaya quartz, which I absolutely love. And I've talked about that before that I love putting like these energy amplifiers, especially into a space where you're gathering with your family and friends and you really want to amplify that energy that you have in there. And I mean, it's a pretty substantial chunk of crystal, right? And then we have it paired up with a very, very beautiful piece of Himalaya quartz, uh, like the one we have in the kitchen in Copenhagen. And I couldn't recommend these more. I think they are so, so gorgeous. And the thing about quartz is that quartz is Crystal Collector's number one crystal. I think if you ask like nine out of 10 Crystal Collectors, this would be their favorite and their go-to type of crystal. Or if they should just use one crystal or have one crystal, they would definitely, most of them, uh, choose clear quartz because it's super versatile, it's an energy amplifier and they're absolutely beautiful and you can get them in so many different varieties. I just think it's such a shame when you buy a poor piece of crystal that you end up having for a really long time and it wasn't maybe the right decision for you to begin with. Uh, so that's my number one advice. If you're a new crystal collector, go and find a really, really beautiful piece of clear quartz uh, because you're going to enjoy it for a very long time. You can get a lot of very inexpensive clear quartz, but the, if you level up just a little bit, you can get some really, really beautiful pieces too as well. And also you want to go for the raw pieces um, that really carry that energy, right? I kind of feel like when things are getting cut or polished, it dulls the energy a little bit. And I, I don't personally think it looks as beautiful. I just think it's, it looks so much more beautiful when it's however nature created it, right? But the reason why we have uh, clear quartz or quartz in the kitchen at the dining table is because it is an energy amplifier and you want to put it wherever you want to amplify the energy and especially pieces like these ones uh, that ha really has the, the collective energy going for it. And this one is absolutely beautiful. I can see in the, in the light here, you, you can see all of the little rainbows. So a beautiful piece like this will definitely amplify the energy, the collective energy and the conversations you have around your dining table. Usually you would put a bowl of fruit in the kitchen, but why not put a bowl of crystals, right? The last one I want to show you is a t cut and tumble stone. And like I said, I'm not a huge fan of, of cut crystals or tumbled crystals. Only because I feel that there are, they feel cheap to me, they look cheap to me, they, I mean, most of the time, cut and polished crystals are crystals that are in really poor condition that you cut and polish to make it more attractive, I guess. And most of the time I think it's a huge shame uh, and I think I'll elaborate on that in another video because this one that I managed to find is actually quite beautiful. And this is a smoky quartz that is just so gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful landscape inside. I don't know if you can actually see it, but I'll show you a close-up of it. And it's just a wonderful crystal and I love smoky quartz in general. I don't know if you can see it, but it's very pale and gray in color. And it has an incredible landscape inside um, that almost looks like stardust or something from outer space. Sometimes you can be lucky 
and find a cut and polish piece that actually looks nice but i would say it's very very rare that you'd find that so in terms of how i decorate it with this particular piece is that i i actually put it together or teamed it up with um a, with great glass because it kind of plays off like that right um, so I put it with a grey glass tray, a grey glass vase, and then put it all, collected it all on a, a grey um, porcelain tray. So I kind of made a grouping um, of pieces there. And I really like the monochromatic feel uh, and the feeling of having something there that is intentional. And I think it's it's kind of an example of how to incorporate crystals in a very effortless way. It kind of blends in a little bit, but every piece looks beautiful in and of itself. You would wanna have crystals around that feel natural and effortless in your space, uh, that kind of infuses and elaborates on the energy in the room and also reminds you of the intentions you have of this particular room. So smoky quartz is usually uh, connected to some type of grounding um, energy. However, since there are so many, many different types of, of smoky quartz, I highly recommend that you try it out for yourself. And I, I recommend that with all crystals, that don't go by what I'm saying, go and feel it out for yourself. Because there's a lot of things that may be true for a lot of other people, but may not be true for you. I find that for myself too as well. Uh, I love it when I agree with others on what our experiences are with various crystals, but a lot of times it just doesn't match and you have to go within and trust your own intuition with these types of, of things, right? Okay, so that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video from the plant house and seeing how we decorate here with our crystals and why we chose the crystals for this space that we did. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video and would like more of this type of content, please like, share and subscribe. It helps me to know what you want me to talk about and it helps others to find this type of information if that's what they're looking for. Thank you so much for following AVUV and I'm sending you lots and lots of love to you and yours.